This video is aimed at new players, and ideally aimed at players who have never even joined before. When you join your first server, and it's most likely going to be Lizard, Leviathan, or even Delta V, you're going to have a main menu that looks like this. By the way, I am only covering the Wizard Den servers. The Wizard Den servers, which are most likely going to be Leviathan or Lizard that you join, will have a character menu that looks like this. In this character menu, you can create any character that you wish. I'm not going to go through it all, but the most important things is you pick your species, which each one has minor buffs and debuffs. Not anything that game-changing. Uh, Diana is uh, definitely something I would avoid if you're new. The other five, though, are all pretty similar. The job list will look very similar to this. You won't have Security Officer and Warden if you're brand new on the Wizard Den servers. You have to earn them. But regardless, you are locked out of a lot of roles, which makes your choice a little bit easier. I, however, recommend if you're new or very new, or if you're new or brand new, pick a job in the civilian job category. Well, how do you do that? You pick a job in the civilian job category. I would not check any in tags. Even the most basic antagonist like Initial Infected still requires at least some understanding of the game's mechanics. And I would absolutely avoid t checking any is on until you at least understand how to move around. I'm not going to really explain controls in this. You can click on the video in the comments down below if you want to get a better idea of the controls. Uh, I would also not recommend choosing any traits because all of them make your character worse in some way or have a, like a gimmick. And markings is for cosmetics. Okay. So, you do not have to pick any jobs here, by the way. This is just for when the round starts. If you join the server, if you look on the right, the round will either be in pre-game state, or there will be a timer. If there's a timer, that means you are late joining. It will always tell you the map on the right side as well, and how many players there are. So, to get into the game, you just go in the top left. You can either click observe, and observing will let you watch other players, and possibly take minor ghost rolls, like mice and stuff. I, however, would just recommend playing the game. I would recommend being your character. That is the best way to learn and get a feel of what this game is actually about. So, if you click join, you'll see all the open roles. Obviously, there's no one in the server, so uh, every single role is available. However, what you're going to want to look for is you come down here. If you are absolutely brand new and you, are, you don't want to mess anything up, you just want to learn the controls, I would play Passenger. However, if you want to learn... If you hunt some very basic responsibility, but no pressure, and you want to learn some learn some mechanics and learn how to like use your hands and stuff, I would pick Janitor. I would save technical assistant jobs for when you're looking to branch into more specific jobs. So there's jobs like the technical assistant and the research assistant. There's also the medical intern and a service worker. Those are the learner roles, but I will pick Janitor for this video. Ah, here you are. In the top right of your screen, it will say, Welcome aboard. It will tell you your role. It will tell you who your boss is, which is the head of personnel. Don't worry about that too much. And since you late joined, a shuttle transferring you to the station will arrive shortly. You will be on... There it is. You will either be on the left side of this ship. And by the way, to open these doors, you either hover over them and press E... Or you left click them. It's very simple. You don't have to work mess with anything else yet. And you just want to make sure you are on the shuttle. That's all you got to do. You don't have to worry about sitting down. And by the way, you can be on the right side of it. So you either walk left or walk right. Don't walk in this space. I don't think I have to tell you that, but be cautious. Soon the doors will lock. And now that the doors are locked, you are flying faster than light to the station. If you want to sit down to avoid falling over, you can simply cl click yourself and drag onto the chair. And on the right side of the screen, it will say buckled. There are two ways to get out of the chair, and I'll just explain them now. You can either click the buckled icon, which is what I do, or you can right click yourself and unbuckle. Either way, that's how you get off. Now, make sure you get off of the sh shuttle. You do not want to be, you want to be past this tiny fan you want to be here. Even if you're not in the station, you do not want to be there. This is, from what I know of, is going to be changed, but you want to get into the station. And I'll show you. Even if you're standing here, you can't, space will not harm you. Because there's a tiny fan, which means that no space will get into this area. So what you do is you just walk into here, 
and you're good to go. You are now on the station. And remember, you press E or left click to open these doors. You can't just bump into them. Also, as soon as you get in the station, you might notice some things are upside down. Press 8 on your numpad to flip your camera direction to the correct orientation. This is something that is very commonly mistaken even with more experienced players. Okay, well, we have just gone off the arrival ship, and you're going to be lost. I understand that. Space Station 14 is a open open-ended sandbox role-playing game. I am the janitor. My go my job is to clean messes. The more you focus on doing your role, especially when you're new, the more you focus on fixating on your role, the better your roleplay is going to be. Be the stereotypical janitor. Be the dude that's going to clean everything. You see this empty jerky bag on the ground? You pick that up and you put it in this type of trash can. You put it in the disposal unit. You are now effectively playing your role. And congratulations, you've just done your first roleplay action in Space Station 14. Now, what I would also recommend doing is exploring the station a little bit. You're a janitor. You don't have that. You don't have much responsibility other than cleaning. There's some very basic terminology I will explain to you right now. A lifeblood of the game are crowbars. Every player tries to get one. Why? Because crowbars let you open doors that don't have power. Like these doors are powered. And by the way, you can shift click doors to see if they have power. It's not that big of a deal. And you can put them in your pocket slots, meaning you can just take them with you. One common area in the game is an area that looks like this. They are typically dark and have these catwalks and no floor tiles. And you'll see pipes and wires. We call this area maintenance. Maintenance is where you might get shanked and never come back. Or you might walk into a dude who's willing to offer you untold riches a lot of crazy stuff happens in maintenance a lot of nothing happens in maintenance it is a very weird area and no other game has anything that's like this maintenance is like walking into like narnia you have no idea what's going to happen in here and like yeah sure th this is just where the wires are but so much more happens in here in maintenance you can find really useful things like tools or you can find emergency suits to survive space or you can find oxygen tanks but i'm not going to go through everything as a janitor, the one thing you're going to want to do is find your janitor closet. This station is, funnily enough, really easy. Not all stations have signs like this, but for every other job, you will see signs. So at this area, this is like a junction. If I look here, if I go up, evac, bridge, medical, and security are there. And by the way, if you just get close to the signs and shift click them, sex sign, a direction sign pointing out which way security is. It is good to orient yourself on a station. It is good to know where to, to get around. Because people will be talking on radio. People will say, hey, I need a janitor. That's science. But you don't need to know where science is. You could just figure it out through signs. So here is the janitor's closet. I'm not going to tell you how to play a janitor. That's a whole different video. You can experiment. You can look through the tools. Like I'm pretty sure you can figure out that a mop and water will clean the floor. But anyways... You can always follow these signs. So, like, if somebody wants you in science, just, well, let's go to science. The sign points down. Okay. Well, obviously, uh, there's nothing here. And this is engineering. So, well, we keep going this way. And not all stations are that amazingly marked. So, the only error we had was science is down. Well, if you keep going down, you will find out that, uh... Science is not down here. You'll see another sign, at least, that points up. Well, thankfully, since it's a top-down 2D game, the only place to go is this direction. And here you are. You'll see signs like this. It'll be like the science sign, science indi sign indicating science area. Almost all maps will have that. Or you'll see the robo sign for the robotics lab. And in this map right next door is Med Bay. Another thing that's worth mentioning as of right now, there's an area called Hop or the head of personnel. You'll often see symbols like this, and you'll see these, like, Q areas. If you look inside, you normally see a man or a woman or plant person, slime person, wearing blue, fairly regal clothing. They'll have a dog and either named E and or Lisa, and you'll see things called ID card computers. Here is a place you can go to to talk to somebody who can probably help point you in the right direction. Most heads of personnel are very knowledgeable of the station, and they are the ones that can change your job. So if you decide you didn't want to be a janitor, you want to try learning something else, like you want to try being a bartender, you could come here and you could simply 
If you look in your bottom left, this is where your PDA is. If you all click your PDA, it'll pull out your ID. And if you even look at my ID, it will say your name and your role. And that's another thing that players get confused about. Your access isn't like on your character. You have a literal, you have a PDA that has a, your ID inside. That's how you get your ID changed or get a job you want. So if even if you late join as a passenger and you decide, hey, I want to try being a janitor, come here and ask for a job. You're not going to, you're most likely not going to be able to get security. I, once again, would not pick a high responsibility role or even ask for it if you don't know what you're doing, if you want to actually try to be a responsible player in this game. It's okay to be incompetent. It's okay to make mistakes. Actually, it's fantastic to make mistakes. That's what makes the game good. Don't be afraid to make mistakes, but don't be so overboard on going into a situation you don't understand. Like, don't pick Captain because he gets a gun. Like, that type of thing. If you want to actually get into this game, this game's an experience. The game is a very tight-knit community, and it's hard, to, it's, hard to, it's hard to get that if you're coming from a different game. This game is very community focused. There's almost a vibe. There's it's a stupid saying. It's a, it's stupid to say, but there's definitely a culture that surrounds servers. Like if you play on Leviathan right now, it's pretty it's slower paced. If you play on Lizard, you're you might not learn anything. Lizard is very chaotic, especially during prime time. But I guess that's also partially to do with population. But either way, it's hard to explain it, but that's basically the gist of it. You kind of just have to be willing to pick up things as you go. Like, I've made a thousand guides now, but this is the one that might help players not be so daunted to just even join the game. I will close the video with this. Death is rather common in Space Station 14. You could have done everything right in the shift, and you might still end up dead on the floor. However, if you're in a state where you're critical, you have three choices. You can wait till you die, or somebody might rescue you. You can... In the chat, type slash ghost, it will kill you, but that means you can still be revived. Or you can slash suicide, which basically just says, I'm done with this character, let me die. So, for just an example, I'll ghost out. And, one thing to note, if somebody is dead in the game, and you sh like if you shift-click to examine them, you'll see that they'll say his, her, whatever soul has departed. If it's red, that means they can still be revived by medical. However, I will inform you very quickly that if you were to take a ghost roll like Hamlet, or any ghost roll, it doesn't matter what it is, and you leave that ghost roll, you have forfeited your old body. The text will turn yellow, and that means you're done. You, like, this character cannot be revived, you will be thrown in the morgue, or cremated, or whatever. Just note that if you take a ghost roll after you die, you guarantee give up on your character. And that is something that is not intuitive to a new player and that's why i'm throwing it in here at the end i hope you learned something in this video i hope this at least gives even one person some better direction into the game and i hope this encourages you something to start the game i know there's some anxiety for certain players to start a role-playing game like this they're scared they're going to do something wrong they're scared they're not going to be good enough whatever the reason is don't be afraid to play the game just get in there don't be afraid to make mistakes enjoy the crazy wacky world of space station 14